In the past we've discussed quite a lot of very unusual stars, somewhere out there, in our galaxy or even beyond it. But when it comes to some of the most unusual and some of the most extreme stars out there, there's only one example that really stands out. The example we've discussed many times before, usually when there was some kind of a new record. Here we're talking about these extreme stars known as wolf Rayet stars, or WR for short. And this here is the famous image of WR124 taken by the James Webb a few months ago. And so when it comes to these unusual stars, they actually seem to beat a lot of records when it comes to everything. They're usually the most massive, they're usually the hottest stars out there, they're also the most explosive or at least produce the most powerful supernova. And usually any kind of a super active star forming region, like the famous R136, located in the nearby galaxy of Large Magellanic Cloud, will contain quite a few of these stars interacting with other stars as well. But with one exception. What makes wolf Rayet stars different from most other stars is actually the fact that, well, they usually come with some kind of a dramatic emission that very often creates a nebula around them. And because they're so powerful and produce so much radiation, they also illuminate the entire nebula, literally creating a kind of a double system, a star nebula configuration that's usually visible from extremely far away and will usually produce something absolutely beautiful. And though quite a lot of wolf Rayet stars have been discovered in the last few years, in this video I wanted to focus on the most mysterious and one of the most extreme examples out there, the stars that produce this. These are actually known as pinwheel nebula, and at first obviously surprised a lot of scientists because they could not explain what's going on here. But in the last few decades, quite a few scientists tried to explain these stars by observing them with different telescopes, with the Australian professor Peter Tarhill recently describing a lot of his research and also publishing several papers on a lot of these discoveries, in essence explaining what's most likely going on here. But the highlight of all of this research and some of the biggest discoveries about these stars started to come from the James Webb extremely recently, especially after the release of this image. The image of the iconic star WR140. Yet another wolf Rayet right star that instead of some kind of a spiral produces something very unique never seen before around any star. Unusual layered shells that seem to be released every 8 years. And so, ho oh wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss these unusual wolf Rayet stars and pinwheel nebula in a little bit more detail, briefly talk about how all of this most likely forms, and also talk about at least one star that we've discussed previously that does have a very slight chance to maybe, just maybe, just very maybe, destroy humanity. Kind of. Let's talk about the dangerous stuff at the end. Let's actually start with what exactly are these stars and why do they produce so many super unusual effects. Well here a really important physical concept comes into play. It's known as the Addington Limit, also referred to as the Addington Luminosity. And here the concept is relatively simple to understand. Now we know today that light produces just a little bit of momentum, it basically pushes on things. That's obviously how solar sails, for example, work in space. The more light you shine on the object, the more momentum is going to get, the faster it's going to move. And so naturally, if a star is brighter than some other star, it's going to overall produce a little bit more of this photonic pressure, making things like, for example, solar sails a little bit more effective. And so if you find some kind of a really bright star, here the photonic pressure can become quite extreme. In theory, some stars can be so bright and so luminous that they can actually start counteracting gravity from the star itself. In other words, let's just assume there's a star that's super bright, like we're talking about millions of times brighter than the sun. All of this light coming from the star is going to produce a ridiculous amount of photonic pressure. And it's not just going to affect solar sails in the star system, it's also going to affect the surface of the star itself. It's technically going to start pushing things away from the star, in essence creating a tremendously powerful solar wind. And though all of this was mostly theoretical at first, today we know such stars exist. And these stars are wolf Rayet stars. Actually, if they were even a little bit brighter, they would most likely fall apart completely. And the only objects we know of that can be sometimes even brighter in terms of luminosity are of course supermassive black holes with a lot of material interacting with the accretion disk around those black holes. But you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And so here if we use Space Engine, it actually does have a somewhat easy to understand example of a wolf Rayet star. Now here you might have to kind of squint a little bit or close your eyes because it's going to be maybe a little bit bright even if I reduce the brightness. And here even though I dim the object, it's still super super bright. And basically what you see right here are all of these very powerful winds 
produced by all of those photons escaping the star, in essence producing all of these powerful emissions. Now, in most of the wolf ray stars, what we usually observe is of course something like this. But in certain cases, such as WR140, we see something a little bit more extreme and more unique. And so how exactly do these unusual shells form? Well, plenty of studies have tried to explain this, and they did a pretty good job, but I think this one here is probably the best. It even used a computer simulation to try to recreate this, and was able to create the object that looks exactly the same. The one on the right is simulated, the one on the left is real. And so here it looks like we have two stars with a very eccentric orbit. An orbit that takes 8 years. But once in a while when the stars are really close to each other, because both stars produce very powerful winds, even though the other star is not a wolf Rayet star, these winds start to interact with each other, colliding and entangling around both stars, but also to some extent cancelling each other out in certain locations. And so here these unusually calm conditions suddenly form the environment where dust can condense out of really hot gas coming from the stars. And so for a very brief period of time, possibly weeks, maybe months, a lot of dust is suddenly produced around this binary system, slowly expanding away from the stars. But as the stars separate and as they start emitting a lot of solar winds again, all of this newly created dust starts to escape the system, forming a relatively thin shell in the process. And because this happens every 8 years, this is exactly what we see right here. There are roughly around 20 different shells visible, with quite a lot more now just invisible because they're too far away. And so here, all of the observations and all of these formations are the result of solar wind from both of these stars interacting with one another. And specifically it's the result of collision between wind particles that create conditions for the dust to condense into thicker and thicker particles. Because otherwise these stars are just way too hot for dust to exist here. But as of today this is the only such system known to us, but not the only star system that produces very similar effects, except that with different patterns. Because a much more common phenomenon is this. It's actually a lot more common for a lot of these wolf Rayet stars to continuously produce dust, but change the location of the dust production as they orbit around something else. And so here we have a system of WR104, which produces these spin formations every 8 months. And here it's once again the result of a binary system, and a very powerful shock front produced by the interaction of the winds from the wolf Rayet and from the companion star. But because the second star in most cases is not as powerful, on the opposite side of the star, basically blocking the wolf Rayet star, there's actually an area there where things are just a little bit cooler and a little bit more manageable. And that's where all of this dust starts to accumulate, eventually creating a kind of a tail as the stars orbit around the system. And because this dust is constantly blown away from the system, it creates this beautiful spiral. Although surprisingly these are not very common. These are actually some of the rarest objects in the entire galaxy, with only a handful known to us. This one is known as WR98A. This one is WR104. And this one, despite looking very similar, is WR112. And these are extremely rare examples of binary wolf Rayet stars, which usually requires a partner that's powerful enough to emit just enough solar winds to then counteract solar winds from the main star and produce dust in the process. But as we know from systems like R136, even though there are quite a lot of wolf Rayet stars here as well, they don't seem to form similar formations even when they have partners. So this has to have very specific conditions, but the exact parameters are still not completely clear. Specifically this dust formation can only happen in a very specific location in the orbit, where the gas is dense enough but not hot enough to be able to form these unusual clouds. But despite being so rare and so unusual, one thing that makes these stars incredible is that they are super easy to see. They are extremely bright, usually extremely large in size, and produce formations visible with a lot of different telescopes. Which is of course why so many scientists were kind of curious to find out what's actually happening here. But because these stars are so massive and so powerful, they naturally do not survive for a very long time. Most exist for just a few million years, and will end up producing a very powerful supernova. And quite a lot of these unusual wolf Rayet stars, like this one here and this one right here, have a very high chance to produce a gamma ray burst. An enormously powerful explosion that produces these very powerful jets that have enough power to actually travel millions and billions of years and affect things really far away. And something really important was discovered very recently, when scientists analyzed a gamma ray burst that happened billions of light years away from us and was actually detected in October of 2022. Despite enormous distances, 
it had a very similar effect on our atmosphere as a typical solar flare. You can actually learn more about this in the video in the description. And that actually means that if a gamma ray burst like this one happened much closer to us, like for example from a star in the Milky Way galaxy, such as, I don't know, this star, or once again, this star, it does suggest that we might be in trouble. As in, it might actually strip the ozone layer from the entire planet and produce a lot of powerful emissions that are going to dramatically change the conditions on planet Earth. And there is quite a lot of evidence that at least one mass extinction event over 400 million years ago might have actually been caused by one of these events. There should be a video in the description describing this better. Which means that understanding these objects might also be important for our survival. Will any of these gamma ray bursts happen anytime soon? And are any of them going to be pointing at planet Earth? And we can try to learn this by looking at the plane of orbit of both stars. And it looks like most are not pointed toward us. But there might be at least one star that could be of concern. WR104. The star with a very unusual spiral shape and the star that was only explained back in 2020. This is actually sometimes also referred to as Apep, named after the enemy of the Egyptian god Ra. And this seems to be a triple star system with at least two Wolf Rhea stars, basically the first confirmed double Wolf Rhea system. But the overall mechanism is very similar. It's just because there are two Wolf Rhea stars, they produce slightly more complex different shapes. Once again, this was simulated by scientists whose paper you can find in the description, and they were able to recreate this quite accurately as well. And so here we have this dust forming cloud produced in different locations in the star system, because now you have two sources of very powerful solar winds in orbit with a cooler third object. But it just so happens that the way that they orbit, it seems to possibly point in the direction of the solar system. Which basically suggests that there is a slight chance that one day, when one of these stars goes supernova, if it produces a gamma ray burst, there is maybe a chance it might head toward us. But the chance for all of this to happen right now is extremely low. We'll actually discuss this a little bit more in one of the videos in the description. And so at the moment this particular star system is really more of a scientific curiosity than a real concern. As a matter of fact, the biggest mystery here is why this dust seems to move much much slower than in other systems. It seems to move at just one third of the speed. Which of course means that these systems are just really complicated and we still know very little about them. But because these stars produce so much dust, they're naturally extremely important for enriching entire galaxies and for potentially causing star formations in various regions around them. So basically all of this dust production eventually very likely results in new stars. Which is why studying and understanding these stars can actually help us answer a lot of questions about everything in the entire galaxy. But until future images from the James Webb or more discoveries about these stars, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.